Hey guys, Jerry Mitchell like here, and this video is sponsored by Sonoran Desert Institute School of Gunsmithing. So what we're going to discuss today is common malfunctions that you might experience on a range while you're shooting and what to look for. So we're going to start with revolvers. I've shot revolvers a little bit for the last uh, professionally now about 30 years. Give you an idea, we've got, this is a uh, 329, it's a 44 Magnum Scandium gun. So say I was out on the range and I'm shooting and I'm experiencing an erratic trigger pull. Two things I'm going to look for. And what you want to remember about a Magnum revolver, there's a lot of propellant in there. And when you shoot it, not all the propellant burns. And what happens a lot of times, a guy unload his revolver like this. And if there's any oil present under the extractor, under the ejector, it collects there. And then when you let it go, you trap that unburnt propellant between the extractor there and the cylinder. And when you close it, it gets very hard to turn. So common sense would say, keep this pretty dry. But the big thing to make it a lot easier on you is when you go to dump your empties or your live rounds that haven't been fired during that firing sequence, you just turn your gun straight up and eject them like that and catch them in your hand. The other thing to look for is a cylinder gap, and that is the distance between the cylinder and the end of the barrel. So with an empty gun, you can put it up to the light like this, and you can see daylight through it. That's a good thing. That means that's not dragging. But then take your thumb and push that cylinder to the front toward the barrel and still see if you can see daylight in the, in the cylinder gap. That's telling you right there the cylinder might be loose and it needs to be refitted. And it happens after time, uh, 15, 30, 40, 80,000 rounds, it might need a little love. So <laughs> really something simple to look for, trash under the extractor and cylinder gap. Other than that, the gun is going to usually run 100% if you keep it somewhat clean. So. That's a standard revolver and a moon clip revolver. This, when you go to a moon clip in a revolver, it puts a whole different level of uh, you in, into the gun and how it operates. And that is because the ammunition is affixed in a, in a package. I've got four rounds here in a moon clip. <clears throat> and moon clips come in different thicknesses. And that also can be a problem. So these are actually made uh, to my specifications. And what I wanted to do on these moon clips, and when I clipped them in, to have that cartridge is relatively tight with a certain brand of ammunition. So, so if you're out on the range and you close your cylinder like this when it's empty and it's really free, and then when you put a moon clip in it and you do the same thing and it's not, a lot of times that is caused by the operator either having a moon clip which is too thick and that directly affects the headspace, which means the distance of the back of the cartridge to the recoil shield on the revolver. So it's actually dragging right there. The other thing that can happen, and I've seen this a lot, is when guys go to unload a moon clip, they'll get a pair of pliers or something or whatever and just pry them out this way. And anytime you do that, you'll torque the clip and you'll actually bend it. And once you bend it, when you put it back in the revolver, it's doing this as the revolver uh, cylinder rotates and it drags on the recoil shield of the revolver and makes the action very choppy. So, easy way to do that, guys. Get you an old golf club. This is about what they're good for anyway. Cut it off to where it just fits the cartridge and you see, come right out. And what happened, you can buy all kind of fancy stuff. Uh, I've used hydraulic tubing on the 45, but the idea is when I'm twisting it, I'm not picking it up and I'm bringing it straight out to the side and not up makes the clip last longer and you're going to, you can live a happy life. The other thing I've done in competition or when I'm back going through my equipment, say I've just shot a match and I've got 30 moon clips that I've shot. Even in between stages when I'm shooting and I'm reloading into other clips, I'll put them up to the light like this. And what I'm looking for is any daylight present and that's telling me if the clip has been bent. Sometimes when you drop them, they'll get stepped on an all row or someone taping target, hey, here's your clip and they flip it to you after they stepped on it and you wasn't aware that it was abused. And sometimes you can actually drop them hard on a hard surface and they'll actually tweak a little bit and you'll bend one of the ears. And then when you load it, you don't really notice it till you put it in the gun. So they do make what they call a moon check, which is like an auxiliary cylinder that you can drop the completely loaded clip into that to check to make sure that the clips are, uh, are flat and not tweaked or bent. So kind of interesting. Small things like that always catch you off guard. I've been competing now for about 40 years. I've spent a lot of time on the range. And during those 40 years, there were many times I had to find the help of a professional gunsmith to keep me going. So if being a professional gunsmith is something you might want to consider as a career, 
SDI has the materials and the knowledge to make all that happen. And you never know, you might help an old guy like me get some. And, kind of, and you blame it on the gun. Uh, same thing there on the cylinder gap. Uh, usually what I'll do, I'm constantly looking at the condition of my guns. Of course, this is this is good. You can get a feeler gauge. It's the 6,000th feeler gauge pushing the cylinder forward, and it's just a little bit snug on it. That's about what I want. And I pull the cylinder to the back. It becomes a little loose, just enough to make it free, and it spins very easily, and that means it's ready to roll. So that's just a couple of tips on revolvers. A pretty simple gun to maintain and shoot. Pistols, on the other hand, Wow, you can write a book on this. Okay, I'm out on the range and I'm shooting and I have a brass catch, you know, the classic stovepipe. Let me see if I can induce one with a, with a spent cartridge here. And you have something that looks like this. Classic stovepipe. A couple of things can happen there. Usually on 1911s, it's gonna be the extractor. The quality of the extractor, is it chipped, is it worn, is it properly fitted to begin with? Uh, your ammunition also, is the quality of the rim there? Has it been reloaded? Uh, give you an idea, we're gonna break this gun down right quick for you. We empty. Let's go ahead and take it apart. Give you a quick, a quick look on the inside here. Things to look for. Things to look for. Let me get the barrel out of here. All right. Well, John Browning did a pretty good job on this thing. All right. The quality of the extractor, guys. So take a fired case, put it against the breech face, uh, slip it under the extractor, and you see it, it just has enough tension you can feel it. So that's pretty good. Anything more than that can actually start to cause malfunctions when the, gu when the gun goes to close. The quality of the extractor is number one. That's one reason I really like an external extractor on a, on a pistol. It's very easy to maintain, uh, almost bulletproof. The other thing to look for is your ejector. This is the case ejector. Sometimes they get worn or they get bent from use. Uh, if that's not in the right relationship to the uh, breech face when it reciprocates, the brass will do erratic patterns when they try to eject out of the slide. A couple of things they had to look for on the gun itself. But on pistols in general, number one culprit you're going to find is the quality of the magazine. So what you want to do if you have more than one magazine is to number your magazine. This one is a number two mag for me one of my competition magazines for an M&P pistol. And the reason I number the, uh, the magazines is when I go out and shoot, should I encounter a problem, I'm going to cull it out of there, and I'm going to go through it to make sure the spring is good, the spring hasn't broken, or it's, it's lost its, uh, its spring rate. And that's something you want to realize, springs are not forever. Competition guys, you know, we shoot a lot, and we also dumping magazines, so when the magazine hits the ground like this with almost a full stack of uh, ammunition in it, it really collapses that spring all the way to the bottom, and sometimes you can actually damage the follower itself in the magazine. Something to watch for there. <clears throat> so the magazine quality of the spring, the, the condition of the follower, and if you, have a, if you have a 1911 that doesn't lock to the rear, on the last shot, kind of give you an idea. And this is where it's going to be critical on a magazine. Usually the first couple of rounds out of the mag and the last round out of the mag is where things happen on magazines. So the condition of the spring affects all of that, especially on the last round out. So if you're having problems uh, with your gun short cycling on the last few rounds in the magazine, first thing to look for is how much magazine tension you have on that follower. A lot of times the spring has collapsed so much it's not presenting the ammunition in, in, into the right relationship to the slide as it makes it feed into the chamber. So magazine spring quality, the quality of the magazine, kind of give you a brief look here. These are two 1911 magazines and you can see these have a an expanded uh, lip design on the feed lip. And this one has a parallel feed design. These usually work, this design usually works better with a broad range of ammunition. This magazine with a tapered feed lip like this was originally designed for the 1911 when they were shooting ball ammo, and it, and it released that cartridge relatively quick during the cycle, but the bullet is completely round, it's like a ball bearing, so it goes in the chamber. When you go to hollow points or semi, uh, semi wide cutter ammunition or anything like that, flat nose ammunition, usually the parallel feed lips usually work better. This has been a great advancement. This, uh, this is a Chip McCormick mag. Uh, 
of course, he was he was involved in action shooting way back in the day when it first started. So 1911 Evolution had a lot to do with the quality of the magazine over the original GI design. So that's just a couple of topics, guys. And uh, give you an idea, that's uh, what to look for on the range.